last time on Dual Destinies. And Mataro's gonna curse us all unless you stop sticking your nose where it don't belong! If you really believed in the superstitions, you would have been long gone by now. You suspect Florent is behind all this? I mean, look at him. Isn't that a face you can trust? You have the memory capacity of a flea! Are you insinuating that I'm Ten Mataro? Your confession to being the Ten Mataro imposter would be nice right about now. Yes, and I'm so looking forward to my courtroom debut. The investigation continues on Ace Attorney Dual Destinies next. A cursed nine tailed fox. The time for settling the score is nigh. My grudge has but festered over time. At last, vengeance will be mine. Grr. Grr. She must be possessed or sleepwalking again. Maybe if I speak softly, I won't startle her and get a charm plastered on my forehead. Psst, Jinxie? Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Demon Lawyer. Ah! My charm must have fallen off again! <sighs> Guess I can avoid a charm slap by toning down my cords of steel. Are they done questioning you, Jinxie? Uh-huh. And on the way back, I stopped here to buy a new charm that was just released. Yeah? Which one? Oh, um... The one with the nine-tailed box and ten Mataro. It shows them dancing together! Really? Two bitter rivals dancing together? Uh-huh. It's a chart for rebuilding burnt bridges. Oh, right. For the municipal merger issue. No, it's for the demon lawyer and the insomniac prosecutor. It'll stop you two from fighting like you did in the court this morning. We weren't fighting. It was just a spirited debate. It's what we lawyers... Oh, come on! No fighting. Charm slapped again. Apollo, if you're done playing around, let's find out what she was lying about. Jinxie, it seems like you're starting to remember things. You already said the feathers and tracks weren't there when you discovered the crime. Have you remembered anything else that seems important? Tell us what you saw that day. Maybe you'll remember something else this time. Ah! When I opened the door, Papa and Alderman Cubie were collapsed in the fox chamber. That's when Papa told me to call an ambulance and the police. That's all he said before he passed out in the chair. I knew it. She's holding something back. Jinxie, it seems you're holding b uh, Hold on a minute. What what is it Mr. Wright does? Um Turbo Lawyer Power. Y you know, I don't think that has the same ring when I do it. That's all he said before. You were very nervous when you said that's all he said, weren't you? I know, because I saw your fingers move as if you were going to slap someone with a charm. Huh? Listen to me, Jinxie, this is very important. Did Mayor Tenma say anything else to you? It was... It was nothing. He was just talking in his sleep. Talking in his sleep? So, you admit that he did say something else. Ah! How could you tell? Only... Only a demon could have such powers! Like I said, he was just talking in his sleep. I mean, why else would Papa say something like that? Could you be a little more specific? Before he 
painted, he said. Forgive me, Jinxie. I killed Alderman QB. He said what? The mayor actually confessed to the crime? But he didn't mean it. He couldn't possibly have known what he was saying. He was probably possessed, or maybe he was in the middle of a nightmare. A nightmare? No, this is a nightmare. This is one statement I wish I'd never heard. What in the world are we going to do now? Return to the basics. That's right. Always believe in your client no matter what happens. Yeah, I know at this point it sounds silly, but trust me, belief is a lawyer's greatest and most trusted weapon. Right. Just believe in my client. Even if all I can see ahead is darkness and despair. Jinxie, does Prosecutor Blackville know about your father's confession? I didn't mention it when he was questioning me. I mean, there's no way Papa's the killer! Why would the mayor confess like that? Could he really have been dreaming, or simply delirious? Who knows, but I sure feel like I'm in a living nightmare right now. Apollo, what are we going to do about tomorrow's trial? The crime scene was locked tight until Jinxie arrived, and her clients even confessed. Not only that, Jinxie has been accused of planning the yokai evidence. Both the mayor and Jinxie are going to prison if we don't do something! I know, I know! Well, let's see here. Our lack of a third party in the locked room is a major problem. Jinxie has testified that when she first opened the door, Alderman Kyuubi and Mayor Tenma were the only people she saw in the Fox Chamber. But the real killer must have been hiding in there as well. Considering the room was locked tight, that's the only logical explanation. Our mystery person must have then fled the Fox Chamber when it was opened. And that's when Jinxie saw what she thought was Timotaro. But... Papa and the Alderman were the only people there. I didn't see anyone else. What's going on here? Nobel's extremely pale, but he's far from transparent. So just how did he hide himself at the scene of the crime? Whatever it takes in court tomorrow, Apollo. We have to take down that dirty, rotten, tin Mataro floor at LaBelle. Right. We'll get him with a legal exorcism, justice style. I wish I didn't just say that. Court is back in session for the trial of Damien Tenma. Apollo Justice Defense Team Leader is ready, Your Honor. Athena Sykes, Assistant Defender, is ready too, Your Honor. Je suis prêt. As chipper as ever, I see, and in French, no less. And the prosecution? Very well. By the way, I asked Detective Fulbright to provide sturdier shackles today. There will be no more of your funny business this time, Prosecutor Blackwill. Hmm. Now, your opening statement, if you would. I believe it's standard procedure for the prosecution to handle it. Looks like the judge is finally laying down the law on that weeaboo prosecutor. You're damn right. He probably realized how Blackwill played him. That was one mean game of Simon Says. Yeah, his honor has to fight to defend his honor today. It's plain to see that you've always dreamed of delivering an epic opening statement. I have? Uh, 
I don't know if I'd say that. Why, of course you have. I saw it in your eyes the last time you gave the opening statement. That was the look of one who yearns deeply for the thrill of an epic opening statement. For decades now, you have been watching opening statements from your bench. They were the crown jewels of the court. The one thing that you could not possess. The crown jewels of the court? Now, at long last, they are within your grasp. How could you possibly refuse? Oh, uh, so you don't mind if I do it then? I'll make a special exception, just this once. Here we go again. Yep, more of Black Quill's mind games. Well, in that case, I think I might go ahead and make the opening statement myself. Ahem. <clears throat> In yesterday's session, we learned the shocking truth that... The victim, Alderman Rex Hubie, was the Amazing Ninetales. We also learned that the Amazing Ninetales was a key figure in the yokai craze and anti-merger protests. It was further revealed that upon learning Rex Hubie's secret identity, Mayor Damien Tenma murdered him. The fact that the crime took place in a tightly locked room was also brought to light. And the only people in that tightly locked room were the defendant and the victim. The defense proposed the existence of a hypothetical third party. But further investigation revealed no proof of a third party who had escaped the room. Ergo... We must conclude that the evidence against the defendant is, well, conclusive. Yeah! Did I say something wrong? That was quite astonishing. You've truly outdone yourself this time. Oh, <laughs> one more thing to boast about to my grandchild. Well, this was not an unexpected turn of events. Now then, it seems the prosecution has called a new witness to testify. The inexplicable yokai evidence left to the scene of the crime. Well, does that not demand some sort of explanation? The feathers and tracks? Weren't those left by the mayor while he was possessed? That was but an act to protect his daughter. Oh, uh, yes, of course. I had suspected as much. Wait, did he actually believe the mayor's award-winning performance? His daughter was the one who plundered the yokai evidence. Ergo, the true identity of the yokai in the manor was the manor's main. Objection! Tenma. The prosecution is engaging in mere conjecture. Hmm. Would you care for some witness testimony then? For I am ready to prove that the little scamp is the one behind the Ten Mataro farce. Witness testimony? I'll bet he means Filch and that creep LaBelle. Farewell then. Bailiff, would you bring in the first witness? Mr. Filch, you made quite the hasty exit yesterday. See that it does not happen again today, or else the beard will destroy you. <laughs> Been known for my hasty retreat since I was a kid. Bit of a trademark. Indeed, you managed to give a total of five bailiffs a slip. Like those amateurs can ever nab me. <laughs> Yipes! Perhaps we should shackle you by the neck. That would keep you in place. Yes! No, please! I'm liable to rip off my own head if I start running! Your statement... now! Yes, sir, Mr. Blackhead, sir. He may be the hasty retreat, but there's no escaping Prosecutor Blackwell. Yeah, Blackwell doesn't strike me as the give-up-easy type. It'd be nice if he was, though. 
Now then, Mr. Filch, your testimony, please. Specifically, the true nature of the yokai you saw in the manor shortly after the crime. Tenmataro's really that little man gal. Ain't no doubt about it. I mean, the Tenmataro I saw was just a little thing about her size. But that little run had a big old staff. I seen her when she came into the foyer. Betcha she stole it from that forbidden chamber after stumbling on the crime scene. She was gonna use it to wallop me on account of my fierce reputation. I just know it. So, Tenmataro was short in statue. And that's because it was Miss Jinxie Tenma all along. You betcha. Besides, all the rest of the manor were way taller than her. Feigning height is but an easy thing. But a big ox like the defendant could never pass for short. What if the Tenmataro impersonator was walking on their knees? Weren't no knee walking, I seen it myself. Hmm, then perhaps that yokai really was Miss Tenma after all. All monsters are not but tricks, either the mind or the cheap parlor variety. So you're saying she created an illusion like one of those magical eye things? Precisely. Human senses are easily deceived. Take the fellow in the cell next to me. Each night, he cries and screams about some ghost he thinks he sees. But in truth, it was simply the janitor. Ho ho ho! Prosecutor Blackwell just gave up the ghost! Literally! But it boop boo doo doo, that's be it! The janitor's deathly complexion and all white attire are, no doubt, partially to blame. That and the fact that he constantly mutters about taking vengeance for this or that. That actually sounds like a real ghost to me. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Okay, hear me out. I'm listening. I really feel like the thing he said about the big ol' staff is important. Okay, why? Because that's, um... If I said it was a gut feeling, would you lose all respect for me? Apollo, of course not. Really? How could I lose respect for you? I never respected you in the first place. Oh, thanks. Just press him before I do it for you. You're so nice to me. Hold it! I suppose you mean to say that Jinxie Tenma entered the Forbidden Chamber to get one. Well, I ain't never seen a staff like that in the manor. So it had to be the Forbidden Chamber. Oh, really? The stench of the bell is thick in the air today. It smells like perfume and arrogance. Jinxie entered the Forbidden Chamber after the incident. Then she took the staff and tried to cover up her actions by pretending to be Tenmataro. I guess that's what Filch is trying to say. Could Jinxie have even entered the Forbidden Chamber if she wanted to? There is one thing I was wondering about. Why did that yokai have a staff in the first place? <laughs> well, I've got my hunches about that. Hold it! Wallop you. And why would the so-called yokai want to do that? That little maid gal never did like me. She always hightails it when I come around or she sticks those weird papers on my noggin. She probably thinks of him as the dreaded tanuki monster of QB Manor or something. God knows I do. We need to prove that Jinxie isn't Tematoro. But I've no idea how we're going to do that. All we have to do is prove that it was impossible for Jinxie to turn into Tenmataro. And that might be easier than you think. Really? Now's our chance! 
Our chance to expose the real Tematoro for all to see. I think I'll... Apollo, if you say it again, I'm leaving this fucking courtroom. Sorry, did you say something? Ugh. Hey, 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 wait a minute! Where are you going? Well, fine, I don't need your help anyway. Check this shit out! Objection! Actually, on second thought, Athena, I might need your help a little. Come back, please. Why does Mr. Wright even put you in charge? Sometimes I ask myself the same thing. Hold it! Well, you're not going to brush it all off by claiming the perp was short. <laughs> Must hit a raw nerve there, cause you ain't that tall yourself. Look who's talking, Mr. I've Gotta Stand on a Box just to testify. Anyway, Mr. Filch, correct me if I'm wrong. But didn't you say the Tenmataro you saw had a staff? Cross my heart, hope to die. I know cause I went a jingle and a jangle. Where do you suppose that staff came from? Uh, that staff, you say? Well, I, um... I think I finally spotted our opening. Yep, there's only one key to the Forbidden Chamber. And we both know where that was at the time. Although I wish I didn't. We got it. Yell at the judge, Apollo. Don't need to tell me twice. OBJECTION! It would seem that Tenmataro was, in fact, not this innocent little girl. Huh? How did you figure that? You claim that Tenmataro you saw had one of those staves from the Forbidden Chamber. But it would have been impossible for Miss Tenma to get a hold of one. Care to elaborate, Mr. Justice? The mayor swallowed this key shortly after the murder. It was kind of gross. He wanted to keep the killer out of the Forbidden Chamber. Hmm. What's this? This key was deep in the mayor's stomach when Miss Tenma discovered the crime scene. So you see, it would have been impossible for her to get into the Forbidden Chamber. In short, the Tenmataro seen holding that staff... ...could not have been Jinxie Tenma! <laughs> what?! But... Then who does the defense believe was impersonating Tenmataro? Our Tenmataro impersonator is none other than Mayor Tenma's aide. OBJECTION! Such accusations beg evidence. Aside from his ghastly appearance, can you prove he is the yokai we seek? You bet your emo ass I can! Hmm, very well. Let's see where the defense is going with this. Mr. Justice, please show us proof as to the true identity of the Tenmataro impersonator. Oh, I've got you now, you slimy clown bastard! Take that! We found this hand cream in the Forbidden Chamber. And we know that whoever was Tenmataro took one of the staves out of there. In short... I believe whoever this hand cream belongs to is the yokai impersonator we're looking for. Huh. But, Mr. Justice, how do you propose to identity the hand cream's owner? I'm glad you asked, Your Honor. The defense requests a fingerprint analysis on this piece of evidence. It might tell us who it belongs to. Interesting. So you expect to find the yokai's prints there? Very well. I hereby call a short recess while we wait for the fingerprint results. No need for that, Geoborgness. We have the prints of everyone at the manor that day. You called, Prosecutor Blackwill? Could anyone be more whipped? Fulbright! Analyze this for prints. 
You have three minutes. Your wish is my command! Very well then, I guess we'll just wait right here. It would seem the fingerprint analysis is complete. What do the results show? What in the world? They're Fleur and LaBelle's prints, aren't they? This... this is absurd. Um, Prosecutor Blackwell? I'm not gonna like this, am I? Don't tell me. They're Ten Mataro's prints! Fingerprint analysis has revealed that the prints belong to... Venus Filch. OBJECTION! Wait, what? What? Then Mr. LaBelle wasn't the one who entered the Forbidden Chamber? OBJECTION! Why, you tricksy little tanuki! Explain yourself now! This is shit! The prince of mine! I mean, I did pill for the hand cream from Mr. LaBelle, after all. So you're the one who entered the Forbidden Chamber? So what if I did? You got a problem with it? I saw it, Scoob! You fool of a tanuki! Order! Order! Mr. Justice, care to explain what this could mean? Excellent question. Um, the fact that Mr. Filch was in the Forbidden Chamber... Wait a second. Does this mean the Ten Mataro holding that staff was... Phineas Filch? Yikes! Another cat out of the bag! Mr. Filch is Ten Mataro? I don't understand. Does this mean Mr. Filch is the real killer? The witness will explain himself this instant! Begging your pardon, your honorship, but I was just doing what the older man told me. He wanted me to be Ten Mataro in the village exorcism ritual. Oh, you mean that event at the Nine Tails Vale Festival? So that was you inside the Ten Mataro costume. Yep, and after the event, I went to watch the pro wrestling program. But it bored me to tears on account of the wrestlers being complete jobbers. So he didn't actually watch the entire wrestling match. That's when I looked at the Ten Mataro costume and got a great idea. Nobody can tell it's me when I'm wearing it. And because of them superstitions, no matter what I do, the villagers won't say a word. In other words, you use the superstitions to effectively render yourself invisible. Why did you want to enter the Forbidden Chamber in the first place? Because of the treasure in there! Thought that was my big chance to sneak on it and nab it! Treasure? <laughs> Only that it's the greatest get-rich-quick chance in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it. Said there was an amazing treasure in there. He went in there not knowing his grandfather had already pilfered it? Guess that's one tale that didn't get passed down from Grandpappy to grandson.
Start Project.